All right, welcome everyone. I'm Julie Curtis with Lumen Learning, and I uh, am excited to have this group here today. And I want to turn things over to MJ Bishop with most to introduce what we'll be talking about today, and then we'll go from there. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everybody. Um, I think uh, since we're such a small group, we'll, we'll be sure to do introductions with, with everybody as well. But um, thanks for joining us today. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to say a few words about most the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative and explain a little bit about, um, from my perspective, the Success Accelerator Program and, and how we got here um, with our, in our partnership with Lumen. So I recognize uh, some of your names. I suspect uh, many of you now have heard about the Maryland Open Source Textbook Initiative or most. Um, we've actually been um, around since very shortly after the Kerwin Center for Academic Innovation started at the system level. Um, the Kerwin Center has been leading this work, but we are now doing so in partnership with the Maryland Association of Community Colleges, Maryland Online, and the Maryland Independent Colleges and Universities, MICUA. Um, so it really is now a statewide initiative, and it's aimed at doing what we can centrally to try to support the work of the institutions um, adopting OER um, and really the faculty adopting OER across um, their campuses and doing what we can to make it, you know, certainly very much about cost savings for our students, but increasingly looking at ways that um, open pedagogy, open education can also um, help our students uh, achievement as well. So one of the things uh, way back when we first started the most initiative in 2014 um, way way back in the old days um, I you know one of my my real hopes for it was that this would also become a platform for faculty to have conversations across institutions around pedagogy and around thinking about what they could be doing to help their students succeed and from the start, I've kind of always had this dream about professional uh, communities of practice for faculty um, who would get the chance to learn from each other and share resources and, and do that kind of work. And one of the things that though I realized right from the start was that we lacked a platform for doing that effectively from a distance. So if we had somebody out, you know, Warwick Community College wanted to communicate and collaborate with somebody at Frostburg, it was going to be a pretty difficult undertaking, even though we are a small state. Um, so we had actually um, engaged in conversations um, with an organization called Faculty Guild about supporting our OER work across the state and um, recently Lumen has taken over that platform and the work that Faculty Guild was doing. So this is an extension of that and um, really something I'm very excited about. Um, we're going to pilot this this year, kick the tires on it, see how it works to achieve some of those goals that I've had from the start of the MOST initiative. And I'm just really excited about your interest in the program and looking forward to the possibility of having you all join us um, in, in the Success Accelerator. So I'll leave it at that and turn it over to you, Julie. All right, thank you, MJ. Um, I love the idea of starting with just a quick uh, set of introductions um, and uh, hearing a little bit about uh, each of you. So which institution are you from? Uh, what is it you teach? And, uh, and uh, what, what made you interested in, in tuning in and seeing what this is about? So Mala, you are the first on. Can I, uh, can I ask you to just do a quick brief intro of yourself? Maybe we'll come back to Mala. She may have to come. Oh back. yeah, oh yeah, you may have to unmute. I know that she was speaking a moment ago. <laughs> there you go. Okay, yeah. Malti Radhakrishnan from Baltimore City Community College. I teach base level biology courses and I'm also coordinator of biology. And uh, we are adapting a human learning waymaker biology for major and non-major one and two. And what else? <laughs> That sounds great. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you so much. And uh, let's see, Joanne. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joanne, Joanne Mack, and I teach also at Baltimore City Community College. 
uh, this coming January will mark 20 years, <laughs> if you can believe, if I can believe, 20 years that I've been there teaching at Baltimore City Community College. And over the last couple of years, the institution has moved to the open resource um, concept. By the way, I teach introduction to psychology, social psychology, as well as abnormal psychology. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you, Joanne. Mm -hmm. And Daquana, am I saying your name the right way? Good morning. Yes, you are. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm Daquana Harrison. I also teach at BCCC. Um, and I teach um, sociology classes. So sociology 101, um, anthropology as well. Um, and I'm currently using some Lumina uh, um, parts, I guess, for my classes, um, but definitely want to figure out how to engage more. I've been in, I do a lot of adult education. Um, so um, beyond, uh, this college level, also kind of like GED and ESL programs and things of that nature. So we've been using um, open resources for a pretty long time um, and adjusting it. So excited to kind of see what else can happen with it. Excellent, thank you. And then uh, Josh, Josh is one of my Lumen colleagues. Hello everybody, I'm uh, Josh Barron. I'm the executive director in New York and Maryland for Lumen Learning. And uh, hi, Dr. Mala, good to hear you. Um, I may have met others uh, times when I've been more active in Maryland, but I'm kind of phasing back in. So look, really looking forward to working with everybody uh, after today's session. Thank you. All right, so um, it's great to hear a little bit more about uh, each of you and we're excited to share more about the program that we have the opportunity to, to pilot and uh, see how it goes. So let me make sure I'm going the right direction. Okay, so as MJ mentioned, uh, we are Lumen Learning and recently uh, in the spring and early summer, we made the decision to acquire some assets of Faculty Guild, which had been doing a virtual community of practice type of professional development program. And uh, we, we did this because we are really interested in a whole variety of tools that can support effective teaching and learning. And there was a lot of great work that went into that uh, Faculty Guild platform. And I'll show you a little preview of the different elements of it. But as we've been looking at different ways that we can help faculty members be more effective, um, either using our courseware or just in their everyday, uh, whatever they're doing and whatever courses they may be teaching with or without Lumen courseware, what are the ways that we can help them be more effective, help them feel greater support um, for the things that they're doing. And, um, and so this is a set of tools that's come together and we call it Lumen Circles. So as MJ mentioned, uh, this is about communities of practice at the core. Um, I'm not sure if you've had opportunities, actually in higher education, you probably are you know, actively at various points involved in um, communities of practice. It's a pretty common model where you have a group of people who are coming together to work or grow professionally in a particular direction. And, and it's one that I think is, is common and works well in higher education because uh, higher ed draws people that love learning and are interested in collaboration. Um, and so this is a model that, that has a lot of benefits and there's a lot of research evidence behind it. Um, and provide really effective and, um, and well-designed communities of practice that provide additional levels of support and professional growth for faculty members. And so you can learn, there's a strong element that we'll talk about and look at around reflecting on what you're doing, becoming more aware of your teaching choices, being able to explore and try new things, being able to kind of put stuff out there and share with the community and get feedback and ideas from others that are growing in the similar directions that you're growing. So what specifically is the set of tools that come together in this experience? So there's a, there's a skill building element of it that's where you're learning and you're growing, you're kind of adding new skills or new understanding. 
um, there's, a, there's a piece of this that's very much about applying what you're learning as you're teaching. Um, and that idea that you're not just sitting, you know, in a workshop um, that's un, unrelated or not directly related to your teaching. We want this to be something that's very applicable as you're doing uh, your engagement with your students every day in your active teaching practice. Um, as I mentioned, there's a lot of reflection. It's very exploratory. So it's something that's saying, here's a great set of things that you can explore. See where you're drawn. See which of these things are applicable to your students and your classroom environment and the things that you're trying to accomplish and then letting you encouraging you to explore and try new things and reflect on what's working what did you learn from it how did students respond and and what are further areas that you're interested in exploring um, one of the pieces that we try to do and this is actually one of the the most fun pieces of this experience is it also helps you become more aware of your strengths as a teacher. So where are you drawn pedagogically? What are the things that you're already doing well? And then how do you start to build on those strengths? And what are, what are ways that you can further complement the teaching practice that you're already in the process of developing and building? Um, there's a virtual com peer community, so you're not here excuse me, on your own, you're with a set of peers that have already expressed interest in growing in similar directions. And then we have um, a facilitator who also is an educator and has a great background, again, around effective teaching practices. And with the case of Success Accelerator, a, 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 a facilitator who also has strong experience with the courseware itself and how can you use it effectively. Um, in your teaching. Um, and then the final element that's here is just around mentoring and support. So that's part of that broader uh, community. One of the things that we've heard over the years repeatedly from faculty members, whether they're new or whether they're experienced using Lumen courseware, um, they often will say, well, can, can I get connected with others who are using this courseware? I, I like to share ideas. I like to compare notes. And um, we've done some of that formally and some of that informally. Um, but this is a really wonderful tool and the Success Accelerator is a wonderful program to be able to do that more directly um, and, and make that possible uh, for a wider set of faculty members. So what, what exactly is Success Accelerator? So it's a program that is really focused on helping you apply effective teaching practices. And when we say effective, we're talking about the kinds of teaching practices that have evidence behind them that say, if you do these kinds of things, your students will succeed. It will help support more effective teaching and more effective learning. And the Success Accelerator program is specifically around helping you use Lumen courseware to apply those kinds of practices more effectively. Um, it also remains exploratory. So it's not saying you have to do this thing. It's saying here's a set of practices and here are a set of ways that, that your Lumen courseware, whether it's Waymaker or whether it's Ohm, um, are able to help you apply these kinds of practices. And so it gives you some good examples. It gives you some good discretion and good support around that so that you become more aware of how to fully use the capabilities that that courseware provides for you to enrich your your learning environment and the experience that your students are having and then of course you have a peer community around that whenever we get a set of faculty members together um, it, it, it's, a, it's an enlightening experience as we hear and, and we get to see and hear how they're using the courseware in creative and different ways. And so that's also one of the exciting pieces of this is to be able to, to see that sharing and, and provide feedback and learn more about how others are, are using the courseware and get, letting that give you ideas as well. So how does it work specifically? Um, so, first off, it's a virtual experience. So there's basically a website, and I'll show you what that looks like, uh, that you log into. And, um, and there are a set of weekly activities that you do. And in that, uh, on that website, in that community, you'll be able to see the members of your circle. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, but uh, Success Accelerator is a, is a two-term program. Um, and so there's a, the first term that focuses more intensively on uh, this, uh, expressly on the courseware and exploring these different effective teaching practices and areas and how to use the courseware more fully to, uh, to implement some of those kinds of practices. Um, and so in the first term, it's a struct the structured part of the program lasts just five weeks. And so it's, it's 
really focused on helping you kind of at the beginning of the term uh, build your confidence and your capability and your understanding of exactly how you want to use the courseware um, and set the good stage for how you know what 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 you want to do with it throughout that term. Um, and, and so with that, uh, you get to kind of explore different dimensions of, of how you can enrich your educational or your learning environment using different aspects of the courseware, sharing the ideas. And then after that five week structured period, you continue to have access to that community throughout the term. And so really it's a great support and sharing resource throughout the term with that structured piece at the beginning. Um, when you're in that structured part of it, it takes it one to two hours per week. Um, and that really, well, I'll talk a little bit about more about what you're doing in that amount of time, but it all happens asynchronously. And so you can do it on your own time frame. Um, any, any synchronous activities are, are, are purely optional. And so your facil facilitator might suggest a hangout, for example, if people want to drop in and, and connect in person or, or something like that. Um, but uh, the, the, the real structured part and the assignments are all asynchronous. During the second term, you have the opportunity to either continue and um, explore different directions um, in that five week, very uh, intensive courseware focus. Or we also, as part of the program, you can opt into a longer, uh, what we're calling a fellowship. So it's a nine week program. And uh, there are a couple different directions that you could, um, th that you can select there. So one is that we have a fellowship that's focused on OER and open pedagogy. And so can kind of, uh, it, it, it expands beyond just the courseware focus and really goes into, you know, what's different about teaching with open educational resources and, and exploring how do you use that dimension of your teaching choices to, uh, to improve the, uh, the teaching and learning environment for your students. Um, and then there's also a, an extended fellowship, so a nine-week fellowship that goes, you know, deeper and deeper into effective teaching practices and lets you just go further in exploring that and do deeper types of, of teaching reflections about how is it you're learning and growing, what are the new kinds of things that you want to try. Um, so either of those uh, are, are an option for the second term. And the goal here is to provide you, you know, choices, but throughout this whole year of using Lumen courseware, giving you these great different opportunities to grow professionally and to do it in ways that work easily in with the other kinds of things that you're doing as a, as a busy faculty member. So let me see, I'm just checking chat to see if we have any questions yet. All right. Let me pause. Any questions right now <laughs> before I keep going? All right, I will keep going. Um, so one of the things that is helpful to understand about Success Accelerator is how it's different from our standard implementation process. And so um, it sounds like you guys are all Waymaker users. And so you've been through our standard implementation process. So we get you set up with the courseware, we get your learning management system hooked up so it's all nice and seamless. We go through the training process to help you get your course set up and make sure you and your, your peers, your colleagues have a, a good understanding of Waymaker and how it works. And then of course we have ongoing support. Um, and all of those things are great. We do that well. We typically have really happy faculty members through that support experience. What Success Accelerator doing is doing is it's a layer above and beyond that. So it's saying, um, yeah, there's the set of courseware tools, but how do those align with effective teaching practices, with the things that research says are going to help your students be more successful? And how do you use the courseware more fully to deliver those kinds of teaching practices to impact your students? And so with that, you can, it gives you opportunities to think bigger picture about course design, about how you're using assessment, about how you're using learning data, um, about how you're thinking about engaging students in different ways that you can do that regardless of modality, whether you're online or in a hybrid or a face-to-face -face environment. Um, just being able to think bigger about the ways that the courseware can help you um, in these different dimensions of how you teach. And then with that, you also get to share uh, ideas and best practices with peers. You have the coaching from your facilitator that's got a lot of great experience. 
Um, and, and there's a, you know, a reflection element where you pause and say, okay, what am I learning? What am I, uh, you know, how, how are the directions? What are the directions that I want to continue growing um, as, I, as I move this forward? And then, of course, um, after the first term, you have that option to opt in to, you know, even go more deeply into directions that you may want to grow professionally. Uh, let's see. Oh, Daquana, you've raised your hand. Yes. Uh, so I was actually kind of like grandfathered into a course. Mm -hmm. um, the course that I teach, it already had um, the implementation and, uh, and such already. Um, and so I never really went through the training and support. Uh -huh. Is it possible to get that? Like, just in general, um, absolutely, specifically absolutely. during, yeah, not just for this. I still would like to poss possibly do this, but just in general, or would it make more sense to just go into um, the new kind of the learning circle and it will be included in that? So, so, we, so I would say you should do both. So the, the standard implementation of let's make sure that you know, you know, which buttons to push and what are all the pieces that are part of Waymaker, that is part of the standard training process. And if somebody has gaps and so forth, you know, we definitely fill those gaps with Success Accelerator. But we've got a really marvelous implementation team that is all set to do exactly what you're talking about. And so I would recommend, I think both of these, they, they really complement each other. So I would encourage you to go ahead and opt into the Success Accelerator program, but we can get you connected with, uh, with Natalie Chakrian, who is our implementation uh, uh, point person in Maryland. Um, she's lovely, you'll enjoy working with her and she'll make sure that you have that training and orientation piece. This is Joanne Mack and I have to say, I have to, to, to agree with uh, Daquana because one day I was teaching out of a textbook and my students bought textbooks and then the next semester I came back and they started talking about this thing called OER and I had to sort of teach myself. So while I have a relatively functional idea about how to use the open resources, I really was never really trained. Mm -hmm what to do. So every semester something new happens and then I have to go and research it and then I kind of learn that way. So definitely if we decide to have, I, I think that the, that the success accelerator will help me, but I also wonder, am I missing the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, the baseline, the yeah. level part of it, I'm sort of missing because I've been teaching myself and I don't really know if I was teaching myself correctly. <laughs> okay, so we can definitely get both of you connected with Natalie and if timing works out we could even, you know, she may be able to do a, just a focus session with both of you together or she can work with you individually. Um, but uh, she can do a quick assessment to your point Joanne of what what you've already what you already understand and then kind of get you through the basics so you have that foundational um, understanding and make sure that we can fill any gaps. And again, the success accelerator piece is, is something that helps you just, uh, I think a lot of, a, a good way to think about it is understanding the bigger picture and what are the things in the courseware that help you apply effective teaching practices that you would want to be doing regardless of whether or not you are using the courseware. They're good things to do with students because they support student success, but there are elements of the courseware that help you do them more, more, more efficiently or more effectively or more easily um, and just give you uh, more and different ideas about how to use the different set of things that are built into the courseware uh, to, to do those different kinds of things effectively. So, um, so we definitely can get you both the, the kind of the basic training and implementation and MALA, um, if you're with a, a group that uh, has a, if you have a group of faculty members that are coming on board uh, new, then I, you probably are already working with Natalie. And if not, we can just double check that and make sure that your faculty members are getting that same basic training experience. All right, so I will keep going, but keep the questions coming if you have them. 
All right. So um, this actually helps uh, visualize a little bit more what the Success Accelerator experience feels like and what it looks like. So over five weeks. So the first week is really um, it's it's helping make sure that as you're so typically this is happening at the beginning of the term, either uh, just before your classes are starting or or just as your classes are getting started. And so there are elements like, you know, getting uh, all the pieces of making sure you've got the basics of course set up and, and, and uh, you know, kind of catch up for anybody that might need a little bit of gap filling around that basic training and setup. The other thing that you're doing this first week is exploring big picture, this set of evidence-based teaching practices. So there's a framework that is built into the platform that says there are four key dimensions of a learning environment that we want to give you opportunities to explore. And so you see them here, supportive, challenging, varied, and organized. So each of these are different dimensions and kind of big picture of how you think about your classroom environment and the ways that you engage students and the supports that you're putting into your teaching um, and into the learning environment to support their success. So that first week, you also have opportunities to kind of explore big picture what that structure is like. And then each week you get to delve into one piece of that. And so in week two, it's around creating a supportive environment for your students. And it's looking at what are things you can do with the courseware to create, for example, a sense of caring or community building or um, uh, enjoyment. So there, uh, we're, we're calling out through the curriculum some specific areas where you can uh, implement some, uh, implement these kinds of practices and set them up effectively with great support from the courseware. And then each week you're going into a different dimension of that classroom environment. So in week three, you're focused on what are the kinds, you're, the kinds of things you're doing around uh, creating a, a, an environment that challenges students but in effective ways. So thinking about how are you using assessment? What are different ways that the courseware supports you in that? How are you helping students become more aware of, of their own learning progress and, and reflecting on, on their learning? Um, how are you supporting them in terms of understanding their baseline knowledge and what are the kinds of things you can do to adjust your teaching as you have that understanding and as they have that understanding. Um, so, uh, and then week four and week five go into these other dimensions. So a varied environment is what are, what are, what are you doing to create different types of learning activities that can help uh, support the learning of students who might have, uh, you know, different sets of needs or benefit from uh, different, um, different ways that learning is structured to meet their, their individual needs. And then organized is around what is it that you're doing in the environment to make sure that uh, the learning process is well structured and well scaffolded so that so that students have a, a clear and well organized idea of how do I learn and how do I succeed in this class. Um, so going week by week, it gives you this opportunity to kind of dig into different dimensions of what you're doing in the learning environment. And then there are, there are ideas and recommendations of how you can use the courseware. And with that, you can pick and choose. You might look at something and say, you know what, for my students, I want to pick this idea and I like that other idea, but I'll try it in the future. Or you might uh, look at it and say, you know, this one thing, it doesn't really fit my students and here's why, but here are other directions that I want to explore. Um, so uh, as you come out of it, you've got this great opportunity to really think about these different dimensions of the learning experience you're providing and that, that educational environment that you're creating for your students and then use the courseware more, more fully and see how it does and share with others, here's what I tried and here's how it worked and here's what I learned in that process. Um, so that's the type of sharing that you'll get to do as you go through this um, experience. So any questions about that? All right. So I was going to, just checking the time. Um, I'm, I'm jumping over into the actual website, so into the, uh, the experience of, of being in a virtual learning circle. So uh, this is a website that you log into, and uh, as you come on board, we'll send you a welcome email, and, and you, as you log in, then you uh, will come into your circle area. And, uh, and, and it's, it's really a, it's a virtual community. And so in, uh, this is what your homepage basically looks like. So, excuse me, your, your default setting as you come in, it will bring you into the page that says, here's what week we're in, in your Success Accelerator Learning Circle. 
here's the people who are in your circle. So you'll see the list, the purple marker indicates who the facilitator is. And so, you know, if you've got questions or anything, you know easily who you should be reaching out to. Um, and then each week, there's, there's basically some information that might say, okay, here's what we're focusing on. Here's some resources or areas to explore. And then there's an assignment. Um, and the assignment might, uh, so typically it will be some type of reflection. So some type of uh, an opportunity for you to, it, it'll say, you know, here's some things that we're thinking about this week. Here's directions we're exploring this week. Here's where you can go explore. And then in your reflection, um, you uh, basically are reporting back. So here's, here's what I learned. Here's what I tried. Here's how it went. Um, so it's that type of experience where each of the members of the circle are going that, through that. Um, they, as they post their reflections, the members of the community can see what those reflections look like. And then um, there's also an opportunity, these little collaborate markers. Um, each week, you also have the opportunity to provide feedback. So to take a look at a couple of your peers in the community, see what they shared, and then just provide some, some thoughtful feedback about uh, you know, what do you observe and what, they're, and what they're thinking about, what they're experiencing, what's your experience that you might share, um, that can provide more insight or more guidance for them. And then, um, and also encouraging your peers, you know, how would you, how would you encourage them to take something further that they tried, for example? Um, so a lot of that reflection is really pretty informal, but it gives you kind of that excuse and that opportunity to see what other people are doing and to share ideas. There's also a discussion area um, where you have the opportunity to, you know, for the whole circle to have ideas. So if you, uh, if you have something that you want to troubleshoot or you, you want to toss something out there for the whole group to provide feedback on, you have the opportunity to do that. There's also a library, and so there's a set of different types of resources that align uh, with the different um, er areas of effective teaching practices. And so you can go in here and, and explore, and there's a, there's a way that a facilitator or others might recommend a resource to you based on something that you're doing or something that you're seeing. And so you can come into the library and take a look at those resources and, and, and again, further build your knowledge and your understanding and further explore what others are doing that effective and what are other people learning. All right, so that's just a very quick dash through the uh, through what the, the platform is. Oh, there's one more piece that I will show you. And that is here in the profile. So one of the things that as you come into the platform, you have the opportunity to do, it takes you through uh, what, what's called a pedagogy inventory. And so it asks you questions they basically are saying, how familiar are you? How often do you use these different practices that are part of this underlying framework? And it gives you an opportunity to kind of benchmark what are the kinds of things that you do? What are the kinds of things that already come naturally to you? And then as you go through the experience of Success Accelerator, it, it provides uh, the, the sort of documentary evidence of how you're, you know, what are the further directions that you're growing? Um, and developing in your own teaching practice. And so this is kind of a cool area to be able to provide some nice documentation, some nice evidence of saying, here's, here's the directions that I'm growing. I will also say the goal is not to play bingo and get, you know, get every one of these things. Really, the goal is much more for you to be thoughtful and reflective about your choices that you're making, what are the needs that you're seeing for your students, and giving you an opportunity to just kind of explore and migrate towards areas that you feel drawn, both in how you want to use the courseware more effectively and how do you, uh, how do you um, address challenges or needs that you're seeing in your environment. Um, and this is another thing that's great about this type of experience is you also have the opportunity if you're running into uh, challenges in a particular way um, with your students, you can kind of put that out there and say, hey, I'm running into this thing. Is anybody else experiencing this? Are there ways that I can use the courseware tools to address that? Um, so again, being able to provide a great virtual community or resource for people to learn and share together. Um, is, is super exciting and we'll be also excited to hear how, how it goes and the experience that people have with this. All right, let me keep going. My next few slides are uh, really just a set of common questions about, so help me understand a little more if I'm buying it, if I'm, if I'm opting into this, what does it really mean? 
Um, so the first one is what are you going to get from the experience if you do this? And so uh, you have a safe and supportive environment with a peer community around you to try new things and to learn and to share ideas and best practices. You'll be able to ask questions. You can share experiences and hear from others. You get to try out some new things um, and have this great supportive community around you to either get ideas for things to try or um, to you know, get some support and encouragement for the things that you're doing. And then all along the way, there's this guidance and feedback and help. And I wanna emphasize that structured part of the program, you have these things, but you don't, after that five week structured piece, you continue to have access to that community throughout the term. And so, um, and there are even communities uh, that operate within this platform that continue to be active even term over term over term. And so um, people typically do make some connections that then they take with them over time. So how much does it cost? This is free to Maryland faculty members. The cost is covered by most. So thank you very much, MJ, for providing this opportunity. We do have a, uh, we, we do have a set number of seats that we're targeting to fill. Um, and so they're first come, first serve until we, uh, until we fill those available seats. Again, these are for um, OM and Waymaker users. And so there is that criteria. Um, and um, anyway, so it, but, but it, it, it provides this great experience and there is no cost to you or to your institution. All right, next. Um, so when does it start? So for fall, our, our start date for Success Accelerator is August 17th. Um, and I'm not sure what your start dates are. This is kind of, we, we've got folks that are starting a little earlier in August. We've got some folks that will be participating in the start a little bit later in August. Um, and so this is one of those things that kind of splits uh, in the middle and whether this is right before or just as you're starting or just after you're starting, it still is applicable. So the, the experience is one that you'll be able to um, get a lot of benefit from regardless of how, how it's aligned with uh, when your students are actively uh, in the classroom and when you're actively teaching. Um, with that, uh, for those that want to opt in, um, starting next week, we'll be sending out the email invitations to be able to go into the platform and take a look, meet your circle, and uh, just kind of get acquainted with what's there. Then the week of August 10th, your facilitator will reach out personally and introduce themselves and welcome you and, and be able to you know, help you start getting oriented there. And then the week of August 17th, uh, that's when the first of those structured weekly assignments happens. And, and again, that first week is more of an orientation getting started week, and then it goes from there. So how long does it last? Again, um, I think I've mentioned this, but the first term is a five week structured experience, and then you continue to have access to the community throughout the term. And then um, for spring, um, the second term, depending on which version of the program you want to go with, you can either continue and do the five week program, um, or you have that option to, to do a, a more extended nine week experience that focuses on an area that you're interested in. So again, we have the, the options for most faculty are you can go deeper on OER and open pedagogy. Um, and that one has been really popular within the most faculty group. Um, and then we also have an evidence-based teaching practice option that, that can uh, kind of bring in elements of the courseware and go deeper on this, uh, on this framework that I shared with you. All right, how long does it take each week? So I mentioned this, but we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, our, we've structured the activities to take one to two hours per week. You can do that at whatever point in the program, or sorry, whatever point in the week you have time. There are some weekly due dates that are linked to how you, you know, we, we have to have certain dates by which certain things happen in order to have the, 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 the virtual community kick in and support it. So. Um, so there is a, a due date to say your reflection should happen by this date and then you provide feedback to your peers by this other date. Um, but within that, um, there definitely is some flexibility and, uh, and so we'll, and you'll have really supportive and encouraging faculty members um, and facilitators. Um, typically people are, are really understanding. Um, and the other thing that we'll say is if you find that it's taking longer than that and you're struggling with that, 
Um, this is one of those things where you could go really deep if you wanted to. Um, and, and, you know, we don't want to tell people not to. If you've got the time, the inclination, you can certainly do that. But um, we can say that if it's taking you longer than that and it's creating anxiety or stress for you, then you should go easier on yourself and, you know, give yourself permission to lighten up uh, the, the amount of um, time and certainly the amount of stress that you put into it. Um, and the facilitators are great for coaching around that as well. If you find that you're struggling, they can provide some great guidance to you. So what will you be doing? You'll be thinking about your teaching choices. You'll be analyzing, uh, you know, was it, what is it that I'm doing and how is it working? How does it align with those evidence-based teaching practices? Um, you'll be thinking about what are areas that you want to explore or try something new based on the needs that you're seeing. Um, for your students and, and the challenges uh, and opportunities in your learning environment. Um, one of the things that we hear a lot from people that have been through this experience is it gives a nice structure to some of the, the thought that you already are putting into your teaching. Um, so usually as you do a lesson or as you're doing some type of learning activity, you do at the end pause and say, well, how did that go? Did that flop? Did that go beautifully? And, and why? What, what was helpful about that? Um, and so this experience actually helps you, you know, build a little bit more structure into some of that uh, how did that go type of thinking that you're already doing. Um, and, and for some people we've heard it helps them build a more regular practice into being thoughtful about, so I want to do this thing, how is it aligning to those practices that I know are going to support my student's success and are there things that I could do differently um, to make sure that, that it's really hitting where it should hit for my students' needs. Okay, so who is in your circle? So there's one facilitator and then for the success accelerator circles, those are typically going to be 15 to 20 faculty members that are using uh, the same courseware that you're using. Uh, what, as we have, uh, when, when we get bigger than that, then we will break the circle into a couple of, of different sub circles and put people in with similar disciplines. Um, and, uh, and, and then with the Lumen Circle Fellowships, those longer nine week experiences, those are more like 10 to 12 people. So those are a little bit smaller in terms of circle size. Um, what's great about it is everybody is there because they've said they wanna grow uh, in similar directions professionally. And so that helps with that community building and that inclination to share. And, um, and then uh, again, it all happens within that virtual platform. And so you're not, um, you, you, it's not like you have to carve out a specific date uh, or time to participate. It's something that, that happens asynchronously in that place and everyone is there together. So the facilitator, uh, they're experienced educators for Success Accelerator. They also have a really strong background in the uh, courseware itself and so you can definitely use them to get tips. Um, you can also uh, uh, there, there'll be times when they might direct you to say, hey, you know, what you're looking for is something we can absolutely support, but I'm going to direct you to our support team to, or if you've got a troubleshooting issue, you know, all of those are things that may come up as part of this. And so the facilitator will help you, but also where it's appropriate, they'll, uh, they'll connect you with our, um, our broader support team or even a broader uh, members of the Lumen community um, where, you know, we know people are doing similar kinds of things so we can get you connected uh, with, with folks that will help, um, you know, with whatever your inquiry or whatever your, your interest might be. And um, so uh, if you want to proceed, what do you do? So if, if this sounds like something that you're interested in. Um, so I know that uh, I'm just recognizing a couple of your names. Um, we, we had emails that have gone out from most uh, about this opportunity and, and there was a, a website and a form um, that you could fill out to say I'm interested. So if you've already done that, great. We'll be sending out some confirmation messages today to all of those folks to say, hey, you're in, here's what's happening. If you haven't filled that out, um, but you think you want to, uh, you want to continue and you want to do this, you're welcome to, um, you can put your name into the chat and I can grab it from the chat or you can send me a quick message. If you've got other questions, feel free to, you know, send me a quick note and I can address that. 
The other thing that I'll say is if you have colleagues that you think might be interested and might also benefit, we do have some capacity right now to add more people to this program. And so feel free to uh, you know, send them a note or suggest them or you know, give me their information and I can reach out to them as well. Um, we wanna make sure as many people know about this as possible so that they can really take advantage of this great set of support activities. All right, that's what I had to cover. Um, so what other questions do you have, if any? All right, just checking on the chat. So we can definitely put some, uh, so Daquana and Joanne, we'll make sure that you're getting uh, connected with, uh, with Natalie for some of that basic training. And Joanne, thank you for saying you're interested. So I think I do have your, actually, I, I'm sure that I have emails for everybody who's on here. So I will make sure that you're part of those confirmation messages that go out. Daquana's hand is up in the participant oh, list. Daquana. That, that was likely from before, but I do, oh, okay. now, I do now have a, a separate question. Yeah. So um, I, I get, Though there's only B triple C folks on here, I get the idea that this is for kind of like all of the Maryland community colleges and such. Um, once you get your people together, <clears throat> will will it be based on your college or will it be more based on your subject? Um, how are you kind of making the cohorts or the circles? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and so the, the way that we're structuring the cohorts right now, we have people from different institutions who are using Waymaker um, inside and outside of Maryland. And, and then once we hit that, you know, kind of that 20-ish person, if we uh, go beyond that, then we will have cohorts that are aligned generally by uh, discipline or um, kind of area of focus. Um, and that's one of those things we're still getting people that are raising their hand and saying, I'm in, I want to participate in this. Um, and so, you know, for example, we might have all the humanities people in one area. We might have all of the, you know, social sciences people in a cohort. Um, and again, that's a little bit fuzzy as we're getting all of the hand raisers and know, okay, how many, how many cohorts total will we have? And then what makes sense to break out? Um, based on um, the disciplines that are participating. Um, the other thing that I'll say is um, one of the pieces of feedback that we've heard, and I, I'm sure that we'll have an opportunity to, to see what happens there, um, is we also have had strong positive feedback where people have been through this general process. Success Accelerator will acknowledge is new, and so we're, we're trying this, and it is something new, but people that have been through that broader faculty guild process have said they've appreciated being in circles with people from different disciplines because they get different kinds of ideas um, that, you know, somebody in one discipline might do and it comes naturally to them. But, you know, when someone in another discipline hears about it, then they think they hear it differently and say, wow, that actually could really work with my discipline and my students too. So, um, so wherever possible, we'll make sure people in the same discipline are together. Um, and then, uh, and you will have opportunities to, uh, to connect with faculty members, not, not only from inside Maryland, but from other, other states and other areas as well. So other questions? All right. So, um, and coming out of this, I will uh, go ahead and send out the recording and slides to uh, everybody who was registered here. Um, and, and with that, in that email message, um, you can uh, take a look at that and respond to me if you haven't, you know, submitted the form and said for sure you're interested, but you think you're interested, feel free just to respond to that message as well. And again, everybody who already has uh, had the opportunity to respond to that form, um, I got the thumbs up from MJ to accept everybody um, who's there so far. We have the seats available. Um, and so we'll get the confirmation messages out today. So you'll, you'll have the, you're in, and here's what comes next. Terrific. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been thank great. Thank you, Julie. We that appreciate sounds... this. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, <laughs> go ahead, Joanne. I'm sorry, I do that all the time with my students. I, I apologize. I just wanted to say that's great news and I, I am truly very excited, very excited. Excellent. 
Wonderful. That's exactly what we want to hear. Yep. And so glad to be able to provide you all some support because um, you're going to be on the front lines of it again this fall. So I can't, can't tell you how happy that makes me. So good. Um, well, thank you, Julie. Thank you to Lumen Learning. Um, you know, one of the things I didn't say at the start is that Lumen's been a tremendous partner of ours right from the start of the MOST initiative. So just so thrilled that they have expanded some of their product offerings and we're able to, to make these available to you as well. So thanks, Julie. Thanks, Josh. Um, and uh, if you all have any more questions, um, I think you know that the most um, you are, or the most email address is just most at uh, usmd.edu. Feel free to send us an email if you have some additional questions. All right, thank you everybody. Have a great rest of your day. We appreciate your time and we'll look forward to hopefully working with you this fall. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. all. Bye-bye all. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot everybody.